welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Thomas Sanzo, and I'll be flying solo this week. So in today's episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Feats of Friendship comic issue number one. So in this issue, the School of Friendship hosts a sporting event called the Feats of that's right, the Feats of Feats of <laughs> sorry, um, the Feats of Friendship, and the young six. Wow, well, I, I like to call them the student six, but anywho, uh, participate with a transfer student named Swift Foot. Swift Foot, not Foot. Mm, my, 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 mm. Swift Foot, Foot. Mm. Anyway, um, <coughs> with my tongue twisters aside, um, first impressions are in order and. I remember reading this a while back in 2019. Ha, funny. Sorry, um, the comic itself was not bad. Like, I, I like the idea of where this is going. And then the story happens. Um, if I do remember, right, Silver mentioned that this is his favorite. Oh, he, he loves this comic a lot. Give me a second. Sorry about that. Sorry, um, he mentioned that he loves this comic, but I forgot to ask him um, the reason why. Um, I'll ask him probably one day when I get the chance. But um, as for me, uh, the first issue here was pretty interesting. I, I do like the newest character here, Swift Food. I, I like how she operates. And without going into spoilers, um, she's a very interesting character. She's a very interesting character in the overarching story, which this is just a three-issue um, comic. Um, I, I can't say much without spoiling the whole thing, so I'm going to hold off for now. So if you guys have not read this comic yet, go do so, because, well, spoilers are abound. Welcome back. So I hope you enjoyed the comic. So let's go into it. So we start off the comic with a little blurb from Twilight explaining that how she established a school to spread the wisdom of uh, sorry, the wisdom and benefit of friendship, not just to every boy uh, every pony, but to all creatures in all across the quest and so on. So uh, she is establishing or she's starting to uh, how do I put this? Uh, to reinforce the fact of the matter or to reinforce the um her motto or whatever it is she's organizing kind of a sports game or whatever it is she's doing and she's hired a few contractors to create a stadium a coliseum let's say a coliseum and um some of the aspects that they will be participating in is coordination generosity uh, cooperation and Comradery, 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 comradery. I think that's how it's hit. So, Twilight here um, call upon the student six to um, help her with this task. Also, to add in one of the newest members to the team, uh, a transfer student named Swiftfoot. So, as um, the <laughs> student six are in the office, they <clears throat> they are glad that well, they're not called here because they are in trouble. Uh, it's a different matter altogether. But to assist them with um, introducing Swiftfoot to the school, uh, being their guide across campus and so on. So, when Swiftfoot appears, she is a light gray with turquoise mane. And her mane is um, long and curly at the end. She looks like a bombshell. That's all I can say. And um, the sandbar here, sorry, thank you. Sandbar here is head over heels over her. And yeah, she, he is 
Gaga's for Swift Food. And I'm guessing that the time period when this comic is established is before um, Sandbar here is in a relationship with Yona. Because if they are in a relationship and Sandbar is going gaga over her, <laughs> uh, Sandbar is going to be six feet under. <clears throat> but anywho, Twilight explains that um, the group will accept her in and they can uh, they can start with uh, introducing her and uh, making her part of the team, the group seven. So, um, as uh, before they leave, Twilight says that also if you like to earn extra credits, we could use some help in finishing preparations for the feats. And before anybody got a chance to say anything, Smolder says, no worries, ma'am, we've got this. And as they leave the... Uh, principal's office so, uh, Smolder just scratches her head and says why did I say that and Gallus just says yeah thanks for volunteering for us embody, em, embody everything that th th this school is about thanks for the pressure that doesn't hmm, that line sounds supposed to be in Sandbar but you know what um, <clears throat> that's 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 a side. That's a side. Sorry about that. Anyway, mm, Callus and Smolder are a bit stressed out with doing extra work because they're kind of the slacker of the group, which yeah, I can totally understand. And Yona and uh, po name, Hippogriff name name who who name? Uh, give me a second, folks. Uh, Silver Stream. Yes, sorry about it. <clears throat> been a while. It's been a while since we get to talk about them. So, uh, Yona and Silver Stream are very excited about just doing things there because Sandbar, sorry, um, Yona and Silver Stream are kind of very eager little ponies or little creatures that want to do everything. And for Silverstream, this is the first time that she's going to be a part of a culture something because this is going to be the first time for it. So, yeah, I would be excited too if I was in their shoes. So, uh, as they walk over or just walk further, um, Sandbar is enamored with... Uh, swift foot and is totally not paying attention to Ocellus. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> granted that Sandbar is enamored by the lovely uh, Swift foot, so uh, yeah, that can be forgiven. But before Sandbar could uh, put on the moves or Lay on the jams or whatever they say. Yona tackles him aside and um, gets to and wants to talk to Swiftfoot too. So <clears throat> um, Swiftfoot points out that wow, you guys are from all over the place. Uh, so we we get a brief introduction of the characters. So Yona is from Yakistan. Smolder is from the Dragonlands. Uh, Gallus is from Griffinstone, uh, Ocellus is from the Changing Kingdom, and uh, who's Silverstream is from uh, Sequestria, or uh, what was the place that she's from to? Ah, oh, man. Uh, Mount Ares? Something like that? Yeah, uh, she, she says it later on, but anyway. <clears throat> so, as they continue, sorry, as they um, talk about their introductions and whatnot, uh, Swift Foot here asks about Sandbar and asks where she's from. And um, Sandbar is so enamored that he couldn't say 
anything. And Gallus has to just point out here and says, to translate from Mushmouth, he's a local. No, he's a local. So yeah, uh, everybody here is excited to start off the day and whatnot. And when uh, and then Yona asks, where is f new friend Swiftfoot from? And Swiftfoot just says that, oh, it's nowhere you've heard of. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure, just another sunny little pony village. You know, the usual. And as she says this, she has a sad expression. And in the background, we see crashing waves, uh, jagged mountain tops, an active volcano with smoke rising out of it. The background is dark and cloudy. And at the front of this place is two horse-like statues that look very, very evil. The only thing missing here is a thunderstorm. So, yeah, a usual place, you, you know, like any other usual place in Equestria. Yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> as they continue on, uh, they decide to split up and um, take uh, their individual tasks. And Swiftfoot here says, you know what, I'll just bounce from one creature to the next. That way I get to um, join you guys with the activities that you're going to do. And I also get to uh, see the campus and also help you out. Two birds, one stone. Two birds with one stone. I'll cool, I'll cool. And before they leave, um, Swift here says, I can't wait to get closer to each of you with a devious grin and yeah with a devious grin on her face uh if <laughs> if the perception of these creatures or the student six are high they would have just are you okay swift you, you look evil <laughs> so anyway uh before i continue on um yeah i'm gonna break down what i think of this introduction and whatnot yeah, oh wow, this is great. I love how they set things up. Uh, we get to see <clears throat> the introduction of the plot of the story, which is the comic, what's going to, what, what's, what's it all about. Um, and that is how to, sorry, uh, and th that is uh, Twilight and the main six or whatever it is, uh, starting a sports event or whatever it is. So that's the setup there, and that's really cool of how they do it. And then uh, to highlight or to point out who the students are, we get to see them being called into the office and slowly introduce who they are. I mean, as us, the fans, we already know, but for first-timers who are picking up the comics, who, who got no idea who they are, uh, this is a nice and quick way for the book to introduce to the to them sorry and the introduction of swiftfoot here is pretty cool make her a bombshell so that sandbar here is enamored by her and as we go on we get to see certain things about uh, the characters and so on and we get to see the um characters uh, characters for who they, for, for who they are. Uh, at first, we get to see, oh yeah, the dragon here is kind of a go-getter and whatnot. I mean, at first, we see her, oh, she's kind of a uh, troublemaker because, oh, they're in the principal's office. What did they do? And then uh, we get to see her volunteering everyone for the um helping out with the events and whatnot and okay uh, she's not that bad of a dragon i mean um she's gun ho and then we get to see oh no she, she didn't mean to do that well, why did she do that and so on i mean we, we get to see every aspect of the character slowly which is cool which is cool and then uh we get to see how they get introduced and so on i mean 
the, the, the setup is pretty cool. I mean, <clears throat> if you are running, um, if, if you're writing a story or if you're running a RPG campaign, you can use this as a really good example of how to introduce um, characters, especially if you have a quote-unquote new uh, player to the party who got I mean, uh, sorry, if you're introducing a new player to the party who don't really know who each characters are, this is a good way or this is a good example to do it. And yeah, I'm taking tips here. Like what they're doing here is really awesome. And yeah, like I said, I'm taking tips. <clears throat> so let's continue on. Let's continue on. Sorry about that. So on the same day, we get to see Silverstream showing uh swiftfoot around campus and they uh, and silverstream leads her to the balcony on top of the school and swift here says wow um this place is uh, sorry give me a second uh, swift here says wow um this is lovely campus and Silver just says, Yeah, it is, but not for me. Nothing comes to Sequestria or Mount Aries, uh, for that matter. So, yeah. For And here we get to see that, okay, Silver really loves the school and whatnot, but for her, it's Sequestria and Mount Aries. Nothing beats home. And here we get a very interesting conversation between those two um swift just says that's right the hippogriff were forced to live under the sea by the storm king wasn't it yeah and swift uh, and silver here excitedly says yep but now the storm king is gone and we're free and now that i'm at this uh, and now i'm at this awesome school that's really great. That's great, really. <laughs> and by this point, like, um, Silver just noticed that she sounds disappointed. And here is one of those things that kind of made me question or kind of made me um, ponder, like, wait, what? What's going on here? Because Swift just says, it's, it was our teachers who made the journey and stop his evil, right? Isn't it just weird they didn't leave a hoof until he threatened their kingdom? And there, there's there's ping pong match between the two. <clears throat> sure. uh, what I mean to say is there's this conversation between the two where they bounce back ideas. Not only really bounce back ideas, but um, certain things. Um, Swift here just says, well, where, where were they when you guys in trouble and so on uh, she says like I'm not sure how they miss it a whole kingdom a whole race just vanishing like that and you can't really question their in yeah, sorry uh, and you can't really question their intentions can you they're heroes they're our teachers I bet your friends particularly worship them let alone everyone else but what do I know? I'm not from around here. And she leaves, uh, leaving Silver to ponder for a bit. And oh, well, I'm going to just say stuff here because this is interesting. <coughs> the turn, the, the turn here made me dislike this character. Like she's evil. Like why would you do that? Like what? she brings up a point, but at the same time too, Oh man. Yes. Um where was Equestria when the attack happened? Um like there there's so many things that happen that when you question it like what happened? And yeah, it's true. Um a whole kingdom vanishing just like that without them knowing isn't that suspicious isn't that weird and at the same time too um couldn't they send someone to take a look see or to 
you know, do stuff. But it is, it's one of those things where we can ask the questions and somebody will have an answer for it. In fact, I even do. Um, what happened? Okay, why didn't uh, Equestria know about their disappearance? Well, because nobody, they didn't really go and check. Why didn't they go and check? Couldn't they send a scout or couldn't they send a diplomatic envoy to go there and do stuff? And for that, I just say, Celestia! But at the same time, too, uh, whatever happened to, uh, well, the ponies? Like, the ponies were in a few trouble of their own. Uh, there was a time when Discord came back. There was that time like, and you know, you, you know what I mean. So, it's one of those things where, if we were to question stuff, there's there will be so many answers. There will be so many. Uh, give me a second. Yeah, there will be so many questions and answers that we can just say it's their fault, it's their fault, and so on. And the best answer for us right now is the story dictates so. So let's continue on. <laughs> <clears throat> so next up is um, the Colosseum. So we get to see Gallus and Swift here um, putting up some pillars and whatnot. And uh, after finishing to do so, they have a, well, kind of chat. Um, send, oh, sorry, um, Gallus here saying that, yeah, the, this school is kind of a big deal, huh? And Swift just says, my father enrolled me here because he heard about how influential it was and wanted to me, sorry, and wanted me to, to become an influencer myself, yo! Uh, like and subscribe! Follow me on all the social medias! Uh, that joke is funny now because they don't have social media. Wait until G5, wait, that's the thing. <laughs> God dang it. But anywho, so Gallus says, yeah, I, I know how you feel, man, because um, the rest of us, we're kind of special because we're representing our own kind. Um, I'm representing the Griffins, Ocellus is representing the uh, Changelings, Yona has the Yak, and Silverstream for the Hippogriffs slash Sea Ponies. And it's kind of a um, a huge weight on our shoulders because whatever we do reflects to our race and so on. So, after um, his speech, uh, Swift just says, <laughs> uh, Wow, such confidence. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. No wonder you're the leader. You're clearly carrying the group, the poise, the charisma. Everybody should respect your authority. And with that, Gallus is like, yeah, right. They should look up to me. And mm, 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 this pony. Uh. So with that, we move to the other character, which is Yona. So Yona and Swift are carrying some stuff around the stable rapids. Don't ask. I got no idea where this is. So, they have a conversation about, um, <clears throat> well, for, in this case, um, Yona's language. S so, Swiftfoot says, oh, wow, uh, you speak the local language so well. And Yona says, she's a quick study and so on. And Swift says, <laughs> I bet you can speak all sort of gossip with your friends when you sp all speak yak. And Yona just says, nah, uh, my friends don't really speak yak. And, oh, um, Swift just says, how odd. Uh, you went to all the trouble to learn their language and they didn't bother to learn yours? Wow, that's... Uh, uh, oh, you know what? Uh, who am I to say anything? I'll see you later. Bye-bye. And... That is just a one page. Just that <laughs> Yona is dedicated to one page. And I feel that's enough. And I'm going to break things down. Um, in honesty, 
if I was、uh, how to put it, if I was sent to another country, let's just say you know what for argument's sake, I I I get transferred to the states for an exchange program of podcasting. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. And my English is not that great. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. So I took the time to learn the English English language, and、um, so that I can communicate with people around the area. Let's just say, ah,、uh, then fuck.、Uh, let's just say place,、um, New York. Yeah, that's 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 a place that's popular. <clears throat> so. I'm there. I、uh, I'm learning English and whatnot, and then yay! Um, I'm putting effort into learning your language, and it'll be nice if I have friends that can speak local with. But it's it's one of those things where you are in a foreign land, and you have to speak the local. Um, language in this case,、uh, equestrian. So, for you not to feel upset about not being able to speak yak, it's a catch twenty two. I I understand her feelings, but at the same time too, you're in a foreign land. Not everyone is going to learn how to speak yak. So yeah,、um, it's one of those things where it, it, it it's hard. Like I I would say that don't take it、uh, too hard because learning a new language is hard. Picking up on something new is not going to be easy, especially if you're above the age of six. For your information, kids do pick. Oh, sorry, our、uh, kids know.、Uh, sorry, kids pick up language faster than adults. For adults, it's a bit difficult because our brain capacity has already been filled with whatever we are filling it with. For kids, they're like a sponge. So, anywho, let's continue on to the next character. So we hit to Sweet Apple Acres, and it's sunset. We get to see、uh, Smaller and Swift. Carrying what you call this buckets around, and then say the smaller as um you want something to eat you want to eat a sample, and Swift just says, "Are we allowed to?" Smaller replies with, "I ain't asking. If you don't tell, I if you don't tell, I won't tell." So before they get to eat, um. Smolder just comments like the food around here is pretty good, but we dragons usually live off gems. Swift just replies, "The school must have quite the food budget." Smolder says, "Nah, nah, I eat the same stuff as everyone else." And with this. Swift just says, "Wow, that's weird."、Uh, I mean, the school makes a big deal of inviting you here, and they don't even serve what you need to survive. Wow!、Uh, I hate to think how much your friends are spending just to get you snacks.、Uh, can't think of a time they have. And with that, they. Head off,、uh, going back to wherever they need to go, or going back to the dorm. So we we get to see with this one, yeah, dietary things, and also okay,、uh, it is a one pager. Interesting.、Uh, let's see, for oh yeah,、um, Silverstream has two page, Gallus has two page, Yona and. Um, Smolder has one page, so yeah. Oh wow, this is very interesting because、um, Swift here is planting the idea that、um, dragons,、uh, sorry, 
the school is feeding y- uh, smolder um what you call this her basic dietary needs and at the same time too uh she's also planting the idea of her friends spending most of their pocket money to get snacks for smolder and smolder says that oh no like they haven't at all and this bumps her out and wow that that Swift here is just being a big meanie without really obviously being one. She's just stating things out. Like, oh god, like... <laughs> oh man, okay, I'm going to hold my tongue for a bit because that's going to be for the end. <clears throat> so anyway, we move on to the last creature, Ocellus. Um, we see Swift carrying a cage... Uh, along with a minotaur. At first, I'm thinking, wait, what? Is there a minotaur in the exchange program? That's interesting. I don't remember. And then, yeah, we see, oh, it's Ocellus. <laughs> so, with this one, we get to see Swift just saying that, wow, um, you're, uh, you, you, sorry, um, no, 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 uh, she says, I don't mean to be rude, but can you really turn into anything? And Ocellus just says, well, no, but I can take the shape of a lot of things. But you're stuck in that one form. You don't get a muscle cramp from that? And we get to see um, uh, Swiftfoot here implanting the idea of so wait your you you take up that form because it makes the pony's life easier and if you take another form it makes them uncomfortable and wow that that sucks well if it wasn't uh, if it was at least your friends aren't nervous when you change right and yeah she's planting the idea of Ocellus not being herself, but that's not true. That's not true. This this is Ocellus' true form. She, as far as I know, Changeling doesn't have any, well, the new Changeling doesn't have a another form, so I can't say much. So, yeah, uh, let's move on to, is this another one? No, this is a two-pager. Interesting. <clears throat> let's move on to the last pony. And the last pony is Sandbar. So, uh, <laughs> Swift can't do much with him. He's head over heels over her. Yeah, and she she's like, okay, this pony is easily manipulated. So let me try and just do my thing. And um, uh, she invites uh, him to walk her to her inn in town. So, as they walk, Sandbar says, uh, you want to see if any pony wants to hang out first? And as they head out, they see the uh, student, uh, oh, sorry, uh, Sandbar's friend being very, very negative, scowling, feeling depressed and whatnot. And Sandbar says, um, guys... And before that, we get to see Gallus saying, you know what? It's been a long day. You guys can do whatever you want. Silver Streams flies up in the sky and says, yeah, better rest up for the feast tomorrow. Smolder sulks and walk away saying, sure, see you. See if I can get something decent to eat. Yona says, Yak, 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 yak. And Ocellus walks away silently. And we get to see the group um, break away. And Sandbar here is just like, What the hell is going on? And before he gets to go up to any pony, uh, he just, I'm uh, sorry, um, Swift just says, Everybody. 
just tired. You remember? Uh, you you were walking me back. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So <clears throat> they head to the inn and whatnot. And um, sorry, they head to the inn, and Sandra comments that she's staying pretty far away from the uh, school because some of the students that are there stay in the campus housing and Swift here mentions that she didn't register in time so with that uh, she asks um, Sandbar here if she wants to skip the feats and just give her a tour around and Sandbar just said, I, I, I love to, but I, I can't leave my friends hanging. We're all home. Uh, we're, uh, sorry, my, my friends hanging, and we're all counting on you too. And yeah, with that, we, we get to see that Sandbar is the only character here that is not. Uh, how do you put this? Uh, Sandbar is the not sorry. <laughs> Sandbar is the only character here who was not really fully manipulated by uh, Swift, but he he's almost I won't say almost because he's concerned for the rest because he doesn't want to. But at the same time, um, maybe I didn't want to do the feast. Oh. and he wonders like, oh, is Mulder's fault? Oh, well. And it gets him thinking. It gets him thinking. And we go back to uh, Swiftfoot. And we see that, oh, okay. She goes up to her room. And we see, oh, no. A portrait of Celestia that was hanging on the wall is now in the trash. Down with Celestia and up with Luna. <laughs> oh, no. That's not true. So... As she heads into her room, she proclaims that she can finally peel this thing off, revealing her true Curie mark. And she uses her powers to report in and saying that, I'm calling to report, Father. I'm in. And with that, next time, tension mounts in the next issue. And with that, the episode ends. Yeah, um... Oh, wow, well, let's. I'm gonna give him a final thought. This comic is pretty awesome. I I I like the setup. I I love where this is going, and at first I'm thinking, why is this pony such a mm, witch? Yes, you replace the B with the W. You know what I mean. So why is she like this? And we get to see, oh, she's like this because she's not a pony, she's something else. And you know what? I, I am very curious. What is she? We don't get one. We, we don't even get an explanation. Okay. <clears throat> um, Swift Foot, Earth, Mare, da 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 da. Uh, a transfer student at the School of Friendship and the young 670 member in the Feats of Friendship in. My Little Pony Feats of Friendship also appears in My Little Pony Magic Issue 1 cover RE. What is that? What is that indeed? Um, okay, you know what? Her cutie mark uh, is a strange symbol disguised as a Okay, so we don't really know who she is. Uh, there's the issue 100 cover. And she is... This is episode... Season 10 episode? Oh, uh, wow. Brr, I don't remember stuff. You know what? I don't remember. The, yeah, she's not in the... Yeah, yeah. Looking at stuff is hard. Anyway. Uh, so, where was I? Yes, yes. The comic. Is, so, we get to see that she's not a regular earth pony. What is she? Uh, she might be evil. I think she's evil. 
So, putting doubts in the minds of the heroes is a powerful tool. This this is very very mean. Uh, this this is basically psychological warfare. Uh, how do you put this trust and how how do you break up a team? You do this. You do this and the characters will fall apart on their own. Uh, be it ego, mistrust, and so on. Like, this is how you do it. And her, like, the way she does things is really subtle. You you won't think that she's... <laughs> you won't think that she's doing it on purpose, but she is. She is. And she knows how to place on characters, um, ego, uh, confidence, and um, self, uh, self-confidence, self self-doubt. She, she knows how to play on it. And that is devious. So yeah, I, I love this comic. Sorry, I like this comic. Uh, love is a strong word, but I, I'm going to say that I like this comic a lot. I like where it's going. And I'm... Prepared, prepared to be disappointed. <laughs> Why do I say that? Because there's a trend in pony media where you're riding on a roller coaster, yeah, 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 and then whoa, it drops down really fast, and the ending is kind of, eh. it's not meh, it's just. And yeah, um, I remember being, I, I remember feeling that. And here's the one of the, uh, you know what, I'm going to hold that for when we go to the end. Uh, this is very exciting. I love it. So we'll just have to wait for the next issue. That'll be next week. So yeah, I had to wait a month. You guys had to wait a week. Free trade, right? So anyway, uh, <clears throat> let's wrap things up. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbsgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also get us on playlive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcast, which is this one right now, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Master of Lag, and Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya! See ya!